everyone. Welcome back to the Undead Talk podcast. Today, we are going to be discussing The Walking Dead Season 3, Episodes 10, 11, and 12. And my dad is here to join me. Hey, everybody. Micah, are you feeling better? Um, I gotta admit, um, my throat's feeling better, my teeth hurt, but it is a bit easier to do this um, with, when my throat is feeling better. So Cool. Yes. So, you ready? Yes, I am ready. And right. I mean, you know, these episodes, they were good episodes. Um, I mentioned to you how I felt they were a little bit slower than the first nine. But I think that's just because, you know, there's more episodes. We're in the middle of the season. I think things are only going to like ramp up from here. Would you agree? Yeah, uh, I agree. And I think if you really take a look at these three episodes, they're they're pushing the narrative forward. Um, but it, it's definitely an emphasis upon examining the characters, you know, like internal and external tensions. So looking forward to chatting with you about these three episodes. So let's begin. We have season three, episode 10, titled Home. Home. Which sounds like it's kind of like a season finale name, right? if you ask me. But it says, as the group debates their next course of action, Rick wanders after a friend. The governor tries to restore order in Woodbury. So I guess the friend he's wandering after is supposed to be Lori, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He's exploring, trying to find uh, Lori. Because, yeah, he's, he's um, this whole episode, he's hallucinating Lori. And, um, you know, he kind of like earlier in the season, right after she died, he is breaking away from the group he's kind of going into his dark path um last you know the last time or the first time he dealt with it it was he was very aggressive Mm -hmm. and here he's more closed off is what i've noticed um this is kind of like his second grief go around and i'm glad i'm glad it's um coming back because it goes to show you that grief isn't just like a one and done thing it it carries on and you know would you agree Yeah, it's an ongoing thing. There's, um, you know, grief, mental health uh, struggles continue. They're not solved with a snap of your finger. They're not solved with a funeral. Uh, It's an ongoing journey. And we see this in Rick's, you know, um, struggles. And, you know, they're they're looking crazy, if you ask me, you know, wandering around outside and, you know, uh, hugging nobody, you know, it's definitely a, a bizarre um, reaction, response, but these are bizarre, crazy times. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And we also had Michonne kind of like looking out at him. Yes. And I think it's all, they're, these episodes, in a way, they also kind of develop that connection between Rick and Michonne. Um, and obviously we know like that that will eventually be romantic but kind of like developing the groundwork for that connection yeah yeah i really wonder if the writers knew where that was headed you know from the Mm -hmm. beginning um but it definitely now that i i know just because i've seen the episode titles and things in modern day that that develops yeah um we also have tensions between glenn and maggie um, in this episode, and we, he's still not over the fact that the gov- he thinks that the governor raped her, and Maggie keeps insisting that he didn't, and she's getting very angry with Glenn, and in these episodes, Glenn is also spiraling, just like Rick, um, he's, Glenn's kind of turning dark in his own way, and Maggie can see that, but Maggie, it, they both have trauma from what they went through in Woodbury, and I think this is just kind of them dealing with that as well and they're kind of being more aggressive while rick is kind of being more closed off um and i think yeah this season everyone's kind of dealing with trauma in their own ways because it's been a very trauma well the whole show is about trauma but especially this season but what do you think about the tension between glenn and maggie yeah it's interesting to see it's definitely uh, in a different direction than than rick you know, the, I, I say regularly, we live in a broken world that breaks us. And uh, this is so true in the, the world of the walking dead. And, you know, they're being broken, um, not by uh, zombies <laughs> necessarily, but in this case, the governor and Merle um, break uh, Glenn and Maggie. And, and there's fractures not only internal, but 
external in the relationship. And uh, Glenn's dealing with his leadership struggles. Um, you know, there are times where he is challenging Rick, and there are times when he is yelling at Maggie. And um, if you remember back just a season or two ago, you know, he's he's barely hanging on to the thought that somebody would actually love him and like him. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's developing a lot, but he's lashing out uh, in his response to the internal trauma. Uh, Maggie wants more and expects more, you could tell. And she's disappointed in the way that Glenn is handling all of this. Um, the hope is that we see some reconciliation between this because it's almost, it's really hard to watch. It's hard for Herschel to watch. I mean, he sees it and it's hard for him to not keep his mouth shut when he sees uh, his girl and, and what he calls his son mm -hmm. um, viral like they are. Right, right. And there's also tension between Daryl and Merle. And I really like their scenes. Um, this is really our first time we're seeing them interact on screen together in a scene. You know, they had the hallucination from Daryl last season. Um, but now we're actually getting to see them on screen together. And it's a very interesting dynamic. Um, we have Daryl very conflicted on whether he can trust Merle. Um, and then, of course, you know, Merle's still his brother. And, and that's just, that's a very hard scenario that I think any of us would struggle with. We have, they find a family on the um, road um, or right by a bridge. And they're very much struggling. And Daryl steps in to help them. But then Merle tries to steal from them. Um, and... Merle is very against Daryl helping them out at all, and Merle doesn't believe they deserve the help. And and yeah, it's just a very complicated situation that pretty much leads to um, them getting into a bit of a of a scuffle. And uh, Merle discovers that their dad beat Daryl up, and that Daryl has permanent scars on him. Um, and then they kind of like bond a little bit, and we discover that Merle left because otherwise he would have killed their dad. Right. Um, right. So a lot of their childhood came out, which is very interesting to me. And they kind of end the episode in a good place, but I really like their scenes together. What did you think of them? Yeah, there's definitely you know a reveal of uh, childhood trauma. Uh, there is the desire for redemption, reconciliation, but until it's all named, until it's out in the open, no healing can happen, right? Uh, you know, as long as something's secret, it can't be healed. And, and they have spent their entire lives running from that childhood trauma. Uh, and now that it's open, out in the open, I think you're going to see uh, healing from the characters, not only uh, them individually, but collectively. And we do. We see this. Um, Daryl had his, this bond with his brother, but he's realizing that his true family is back at the prison. Mm -hmm. And so there are, there's a lot of really interesting things that take place here. I, I love the interaction. I love the storytelling. I love the reveal. And my hope is that, you know, there's some good stuff that grows from this. And we discover that Daryl and Merle, they were originally going to rob the camp, mm -hmm. um, which was a pretty a pretty big reveal. And I wonder if that's going to come back up, if Merle's going to, like, let it slip or something. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. Um, but lots change. Daryl mm -hmm. is a completely different person now. Yeah. Mer and Merle and we see that a little bit later. Yeah. I think another episode, we see that, Coming out, you're different now. You are a different person. And, I'll, and we'll talk about next episode where it seems like maybe Merle's changing too. Yeah. Um, but um, in the moving over to the Woodbury side of things, we do have the governor telling Andrea that uh, he thinks that she should be a leader. But we also have um, him questioning her loyalty, which he's been kind of been doing this whole time. Um, and he asked Milton to keep tabs on Andrea. Um, and to just watch her, make sure she doesn't do anything suspicious, basically making sure that she doesn't leave Woodbury while he's gone. Mm -hmm. um, and then Andrea asks, where did the governor go? And I was like, oh, is he actually going to the prison? And he does. And we get kind of our first little battle between, or, or between the governor and the prison. Mm -hmm. um, because the last one, I wouldn't really call it that like when they were in Woodbury right. I think that was different but here we get the governor coming to the prison for the first time and he shoots Axel so um and this like now all the prisoners from the beginning have died mm -hmm. right. um 
But what was interesting is that kind of Carol and Axel were developing a bit of a friendship slash flirtation. Right. Um, and it almost seemed like, oh, maybe that's going to be a thing. And then he gets shot. Right. Um, and then we get a little bit of a fight. We have Rick actually getting pretty close to getting bitten. But then Daryl and Merle come and save him. To save the day, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how it all ends. But yeah, um, I thought this was a good episode. It um, kind of started out slow. Um, and I think it reminded me a lot of last season with the barn massacre when Shane went and shot all the walkers in the barn and how that episode I thought was pretty slow and then it ramped up. It kind of ramped up five, and then it did well. Five minutes. This reminded me a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what, what, what do you say are some spiritual themes from this episode? Yeah, there's this seat. Um, you know, let's talk about the name here. The name home symbolizes, you know, the desire for safety, desire for kind of a sanctuary, desire for peace. And we see that. They're searching for safety. They're searching for sanctuary. And um, they want a place they really can f- call home. And they thought it was the prison, but it's not. And mm-hmm. so there now is this wonder, is any place really safe? Mm-hmm. Um, again, this is a continuing theme within the, the series. We saw that at the farm. And you know, coming to the prison, we think they're safe, but there's one thing after another that continues to then we also see the theme of redemption and brotherhood um between daryl and his loyalty to his brother loyalty to the group we see the reveal about the childhood wounds and now we hope that there's some healing that can develop Mm -hmm. and we also see you know rick's struggle with um mental health and uh so and his leadership which is an interesting um theme that we was woven through really the whole series about is rick healthy enough to lead is he healthy enough to lead the group home and that's kind of this episode Mm -hmm. and about the name of the episode what did you yeah home they want to they want home Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's a really good name um and good theme for the entire series um yeah but there is no place in this new world. Although in, a, in the third episode, we'll talk about they actually do go home. Rick and, and Carl do mm-hmm. to their yeah yeah to their home, to their former home, which we'll talk about. Which that. is yeah yeah absolutely. Um, but I would give this episode like I mean it was a good one maybe like an eight 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 point five. I mean it wasn't like the strongest episode of the season. But it had a crazy ending. You yeah, I'd say 0.5. I, I uh, like the ending. I mean, there was some good stuff in it. But again, mm-hmm. these three episodes are slower. That mm-hmm. little attack there at the end was a, was a nice uh, jolt yeah. out of a little bit of a somber episode. So I'd say yeah. eight and a half. Okay, so let's talk episode 11. I ain't a Judas. And it says, their security threat and Rick and the group must make a choice. Andrea decides to take matters into her own hands as Woodbury is in a police state. Um, And basically, um, it starts off with the group and they have this like difficult decision to make. Mm -hmm. Um, They have to decide whether they want to leave the prison or stay. And we discover that the governor has blocked off all escape routes. So they're stuck there. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is very difficult for them to um, grapple with. And um, Herschel kind of challenges Rick and tells him to get his head straight and tells him, you know, he needs to step up back up into that leadership role because he's still spiraling and um, he's slipping. I think he even says, like, you're slipping, Rick. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and we have Carl, and he tells Rick that he shouldn't be the leader of the group anymore. <laughs> that was nuts. That yeah, was nuts. And I was like, wow, like, I felt bad for Rick there, like, to have your own son tell you that. Well, he's done it for so long. I mean, I think that's Carl's theme. It's now his time to step down. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think he sees Daryl there as his possible leader, and Carl's like, okay, Dad, you need to get yeah. your act together. Step away. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we had you know, both Herschel and Carl. Well, Herschel challenging Rick to stay on as leader, and then Carl telling Rick he shouldn't be leader anymore. So, like, two different extremes of the matter. Right, right. Um but we also have Glenn, and he wants he thinks they should hand over Merle to the governor. 
he thinks that maybe that would solve this whole thing, but Daryl overhears this and he's very upset at that. You know, he's not willing to give up his brother to be dead after just reuniting with him. Yeah, but so. yeah, but thinking about what Glenn Glenn's perspective, Merle's the one who like tortured him. tortured him and and uh tortured um you know, Maggie, um, in, in the, in the psychological sense. Um, yeah. And so there's, you know, he's the enemy and he's he, the threat. He has a history with him too. Sure. Um, back from season one. Right. Where I'm pretty sure Merle said some very rude things, things to, to Glenn, Glenn yeah. in the very beginning. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so like, there's a lot of hard hurt feelings there. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we have Merle and he apologizes to Michonne, um, for, everything that happened a few episodes ago in the woods and him trying to kill her. And, you know, she doesn't really say much. Michonne is a character of few words is what I've realized. Or at least right yes. Now. And, and, and she has been, uh, since we met her very strong leader, very, very capable leader, but mm-hmm. a few words. Yeah. And it did make me wonder is Merle kind of turning over a new leaf, at least right. I hope in, so. In this episode. Cause You know, we had him apologizing to Michonne, and it seemed like he was actually being genuine. And then him and Herschel have a scene where they bond over their wounds. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like that scene, too. Herschel kind of understanding Merle a bit more and maybe kind of wanting to prove Glenn wrong a little bit about Merle. Which, again, it's, it's really hard for Glenn because of how much Merle has done to him. And how can you trust someone like that or... You know, it's mm-hmm. very difficult. Like, if I was in Glenn's shoes, I would have no idea. It's the complexity of trauma. Um, and until those wounds are healed, they're always going to be uh, difficult. Um, they're going to be like thorns in your side. Um, so let's talk Andrea, because this was a very Andrea-centric episode, I thought. Um, she, at long last, finally, she's going to go visit the prison and see her her right. friends again and i say friends in quotation so much has changed um and he tells her like if you leave like you stay there mm-hmm. like he pretty much says you're not welcome back right um and um she asked milton to help her escape and they escape and you know she kills a walker as like a disguise to get into the prison but before she gets to the prison they come across tyrese's group Mm-hmm. Which was a bit of a plot twist. I was, I think, I figured they would come back. I didn't think it would be in this way, um, but it is very interesting, and we'll talk about in a second how they're going to. It seems like they are going to be a part of Woodbury, um, Tyrese and them. So we have a Andrea arriving at the prison, and then ev like the whole prison comes out, um, ready for an attack. And then Andrea was not expecting what would happen next where Rick like shoves her against the fence and like um, pats her down looking to see if she has any weapons on her. And she doesn't. Um, and then they all go into the prison and we have this long conversation. Um, a- Andrea and Carol do hug. So that seems to be like the one relationship that is still in good, good standing. Right. Um, and... Andrea, she wants to work out some sort of like truce or something, saying they can work stuff out, but nobody believes that anymore. You know, they think that now that the governor has attacked them personally, that there's just no hope for yeah, and she didn't a truce. Know. She didn't know that. She mm-hmm. doesn't know the backstory. She's assuming that she's going to come in and save the day and patch everything back up. But the wounds are, you know, deep. And Axel died. And, yeah. you know, I mean, there, there's so much story there that she missed. And she tries to listen, but I don't think she completely understands what the group's mm-hmm. gone through since she left. And she realizes that Shane died, and mm-hmm. she never knew that. Right. Um, I wonder if there's a little bit of grief. I think there. so. I mean, they were close. Yeah. Of she, course, she's had the whole governor thing going on now mm-hmm. since then. So her yeah. feelings are all over the board. And I think it was very different with Shane than it was with the governor mm-hmm. they were two very different relationships i always felt like shane and andrea had way more in common and made more sense as a couple than her and the governor right, right. um but yeah um and we have a scene between michonne and andrea where michonne says you chose a warm bed over a friend which mm-hmm. is a pretty deep line right but and you understand michonne's part they were together through thick and thin and 
um, Andrea chose the governor mm-hmm. yeah. over the friend. And I, I could see that Michelle was hurt by that. Yeah. Because Michelle was hanging around, waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah. And Andrea. And Andrea was unwilling to live in that world of uncertainty anymore. And she chose safety. She did. Um, which, well, which, uh, a temporary safety. A temporary safety. And, uh, you know, she, for her character, it makes sense that she would choose that, I think. And, um, but Carol tells Andrea to give, like, the governor the best night of his life and then to kill him. That's that was so wild, on it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Carol was, like, so excited when she was talking about it, too. I thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. And and then, but I think we knew the whole time Andrea just wasn't going to do that. Nope. Um, right up to the end. Um, but I kind of like this moment where Rick gives Andrea a gun and a knife and tells her to be careful. And then she, they give her a car to go back to Woodbury. Um, and it almost kind of seemed like a goodbye. Like, this was Andrea's goodbye from the group. Mm-hmm. You, it felt like that? it it definitely felt like it mm-hmm. but she wasn't really welcome you know she mm-hmm. really wasn't welcome back in the group the group had changed it was two different groups the one that was at the farm and this one uh, rick has changed everybody's changed mm-hmm. and andrea it was best for andrea to leave to go back mm-hmm. to her new home um and then it really was a test of loyalties and we see that as a big theme throughout this episode specifically and I do kind of wonder, is and like, is it possible at all for Andrea to rejoin the group at this point, or has too much happened? A part of me thinks that maybe there's still hope for her to rejoin after everything with the governor is resolved, but a part of me also thinks that this is her downfall, just like how all of season two was Shane's. Right. And it only, it kind of feels like maybe her death is coming. I don't know though. It could be. It could be. Um, I, I, I think she has to test her loyalties. Like she's testing it. Will she go back and uh, defeat the enemy, the governor, or does she feel like the governor is a good guy, and Woodbury can be redeemed? Um, and that's a test. Mm-hmm. Um, where does her loyalty lie? She says she's loyal to Rick and the group, but is that true? Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of going back into the Woodbury side of things, we have the governor and he welcomes Tyrese and his group. Um, mm. So now they're going to be a part of Woodbury and they tell um, the governor about Rick spiraling and telling them to get out and that he seems crazy. And the governor just, he kind of likes that, that of how like it kind of like to him, it proves that Rick isn't a good leader when um, they tell him that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was interesting. Um, I wonder what Tyrese and them are going to do. It seems like they're hurt so bad by Rick that they're willing to side with the governor. Um, of course, they don't know the governor. Right? They like don't, but they, yeah. they, they are almost like they want to pay Rick back. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Um, and then we have the final scene. Andrea comes back to Woodbury. She, um, her and the governor hook up, and then... She walks to him to stab him, but she doesn't. And that's kind of where things end off. Um, and I, I already mentioned this. I knew she wasn't going to kill him. It it w- would have been kind of anticlimactic at this point in the season. Maybe if it was like the finale or something. But I feel like there's still a big battle coming between the prison and the governor. Yep. Um, and I think that will be probably towards the end of the season. So um, it... It really kind of just sets up where, again, where Andrea's loyalties lie. What is she going to decide? I thought the actress was really good in this episode. Mm-hmm. You could tell, like, like every look that she gave, she was conflicted. And once again, um, this, I think, has been Andrea's best season. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. So, um, but what are some spiritual themes from the episode? Well, I want to start by saying uh, there's this thing at the end um, where Beth sings. And she has a great voice, by oh, yeah. the way. Hold on by Tom Waits. And it's a kind of a somber tone. And it's like everybody's holding on for what's coming, like mm. bracing themselves for this big battle war. Right. Mm. From a spiritual standpoint, we see betrayal and trust is a huge theme. You know, we see this with 
can Andrea be trusted? Uh, or has she betrayed the group by the loyalty to the governor? And we see this with Tyrese, um, as they now are going to pledge loyalty to the governor and betray Rick, even though Rick never really showed any loyalty to Tyrese and the gang. Mm -hmm. We see peace and war. We see Andrea kind of stepping in the middle of it all. And can she bring it all together? Or is war inevitable? Um, that's another theme. We see survival versus humanity. And we see how much of one's humanity is compromised in the bid for survival. I mean, can Andrea kill the governor? Um, can she, she do that? Uh, it's again killing is not part of humanity's design and and will she betray that uh so that's really really interesting uh and then of course you know really the andrea represents woodbury now and there's this you know threat woven between these two and andrea finds herself in the middle um and then the name of the episode i ain't a judas of course that takes us back to the biblical story of judas betraying Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Andrea is basically saying, I'm not a Judas. I, I'm not here to betray you, Rick and group. Um, but again, is she? Mm -hmm. And so that's the story. Again, I loved that title. I loved the thread that's woven through it about Andrea, where does her loyalties lie? And I think that's really a question for all of us in this day and this stress that we're all going through where does our loyalties lie? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I want to say I ain't a Judas, but my actions are what could determine whether I'm a Judas or not. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, so what would um, you give this episode one through ten? Um, eight and a half. Okay, I was thinking maybe a little bit higher than okay. the last episode. So I would say eight and a half. I mean, it was, again, not their strongest episode, but I thought, um, you know, I think um, a lot of people probably wouldn't like the episode because most people don't like Andrea, but I personally enjoyed it. Um, I like seeing the group kind of all back together. Um, and I think it's a great setup for what's to come with every, with the whole group, especially, you know, with Beth singing that song at the end. It felt like, okay, we're in for the final stretch coming up. Absolutely. Was, that, that definitely was. And, and we, did, of course, did not know what episode 12 was going to be about. And so we were kind of have, we're sitting on the edge of our seats for what's coming. And then they throw us a curveball in episode uh, 12, um, taking us a completely different direction. Um, but I loved the ending of that. I thought that song was just great. Mm -hmm. And great visuals, like when Andrea's and, and standing over yeah. the governor with a knife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's talk episode 12. It's called Clear. Realizing they are heavily outgunned against the governor's forces, Rick decides to lead an expedition to get more weapons. And that might be the most vague synopsis you can get for this episode. It pretty much reveals almost nothing about what actually happens in the episode. Um, I like the episode. Um, I thought it was a good standalone episode. If you're looking at the course of the season, I feel like it doesn't fully fit in um, and it could have been in next season. It could have been any other season. Um, the Carla Michonne bonding was the only thing that kind of made sense. The Rick and Morgan stuff I really liked, but again, it didn't really fit into the season and where we're at right now. Um, but kind of, what did you think of the episode? It was a standalone. Um, I do think that this was about relationships um, more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was about can Rick, Michonne, and Carl survive together? Mm -hmm. And Morgan was important, but not necessarily the full um, purpose of this episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, so the episode starts off. We have Rick, Carl, and Michonne, and they're driving to Atlanta, and they pass a hitchhiker who's yelling out for help, mm -hmm. and they completely ignore him. And they, this kind of comes back around at the end of the episode. Um, but they go to Atlanta, and we're kind of reintroduced into where it all started. Um, this was kind of like a full circle from the pilot. Um, mm -hmm. And 
we have um, they're confronted by a masked gunman who's standing on top of the building, and there's a bit of a scuffle, and Carl shoots him, um, and Rick is wishes Carl didn't have to have to do that, um, but they uncover the mask, and it is Morgan, and I was shocked. Yeah, I was too. I was too. This was a very shocking scene. Morgan's back, and of course Michonne wants to kill him because Michonne, you know, sees him as a threat. Uh, but Rick will not do that because remembering back to the beginning of the whole series. So when they did arrive back in Atlanta, I, I wasn't piecing together that we might see Morgan again. Um, but I was, it was cool to see Morgan again. I was kind of thinking this whole time, will we see him again? And I was not expecting it to be in season three. I thought it may be like season seven or something like that. They would tie it all back around. Um, but we... Yeah, you said Michonne wants to kill him. She doesn't trust him. I mean, he was literally going to shoot at them, um, which is, again, completely understandable. But now, you know, Rick, like, Morgan brought him in. Like, Morgan and Dwayne brought him in when all hope, he thought all hope was lost. He was all on his own, and he won't let Morgan go that easily. He feels like he has to repay him. He owes him something, and... When Morgan wakes up, Morgan is very angry, and we discover that he has lost his son, Dwayne, and that he was bitten by um, the mom, um, Morgan's wife. And yeah, that this was all really sad, and I, and I felt for Morgan. I thought the actor who played Morgan did a really good job in all of these scenes, and um, you know, Rick trying to reason with him, saying you should come back to the prison, and Morgan saying, like, I'm fine where I am. I'm content, you know, like, protecting um really not protecting anyone but like protect like taking out walkers shooting at them that's what he wants to do um and he's upset with rick he thinks rick should have like um called him back sooner or try to communicate with him sooner and rick you know tries to say it's like so much has happened since then um but kind of what did you think of these scenes between rick and morgan well if you remember we have rick as um he's fallen apart and I mean, he encounters somebody else who has fallen apart. And so we have the interaction between two broken men. Mm -hmm. They're both dealing with guilt. They're both dealing with grief. They're both dealing with trauma. They have unraveled, both of them. It seems that um, Rick has encountered somebody who is unraveled worse than him. He is crazier than Rick is. And all the things on the wall all the writings and everything tells you how far Morgan has unraveled the spiral that he has gone down. He had now is at the point because of guilt, because of uh, not uh, killing his wife as the zombie uh, and the consequences of losing a son because of that. There's so much guilt that he is holding. He feels like he has to clear this area. And that's where the title of the episode comes in. He has to clear the area of all zombies, of all threats, even Rick. And uh, Rick doesn't quite understand that. And Rick wants to help him. And by doing so, thinking that maybe it'll help Rick. And it actually does help Rick. Helping Morgan helps Rick. It's just Morgan's not ready to receive it all yet. Um, so much in that interaction. It was quite interesting. I loved it. There's so many themes woven in that. Um, but again, I think we also we see that maybe that's not the point of the episode. Maybe there's something with Michonne and Carl that is the real catalyst of the episode. Yeah, and I'm glad we're sort of kind of switching gears to that. I really like their scenes. Like we start off with Carl, and he doesn't trust Michonne. He hasn't trusted Michonne this whole time. Um, he wants to go get stuff for Judith, a crib for her, and Rick tells him, like, if, you, if you're going to go, Michonne's going with you. And Carl's like doesn't want to go with Michonne, and but we find out Mich like Michonne can help him, and that's I think she even says like I can help you, and they go they take out a bunch of walkers together, and then he, she kind of earns his respect, um, and he goes back in and gets a picture of the him and his parents, which was a sweet sweet moment, um, but I kind of like that those scenes between Carl and Michonne and. Kind of knowing where things end up eventually, it's kind of cool to see like a, a stepmother, stepson kind of dynamic forming there, um, and I, that that's what I felt like. It's a great, it's a big setup for something there. Otherwise, if 
they wouldn't have had like Michonne go with Rick and Carl if this was just if there was nothing going on. If there was no setup there, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, and ultimately the bonding that takes place between Michonne and Carl affects Rick and uh, the Rick's trust of Michonne. And all of this, finding the picture, um, is going to help Rick's healing. And, all, you know, we think that maybe him finding the picture was for Carl's sake. But I really think uh, Carl, who had that interaction with his dad that says, maybe you need to step down as leader. All of this was to help put his dad back together again. So that his dad can find, uh, you know, mental clarity clear again that purpose mm -hmm. uh, that he's looking for uh, so there's a lot of themes woven in here Rick is helping his dad heal and finding out that Michonne is trustworthy uh, helps Carl uh, mm -hmm. so a lot there's a triangle here of healing taking place and I love it I think it's beautiful um, yeah yeah for sure and um, Morgan insists on staying behind and I figured he wouldn't become a permanent um, figure in the group. Um, I think it also is goes to show you that like Rick can't save everyone, and not everyone can be saved, and not like physically saved, emotionally saved. Like some people are better off on their own. To me, it kind of reminded me of when they had to leave Jim behind all the way back in season one by the tree. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this is different with Morgan; he's not dying, but in a way, he's kind of emotionally dying. Um, but you know, and if he doesn't want to go with Rick, Rick can't force him to go. Um, that's kind of the way I see it. And I wish maybe there was a, a bit different of a resolution, of course, and things ended on a happier note for Morgan. Um, but we do have Carl apologizing to Morgan for shooting him and Morgan kind of telling him it's okay. And again, like, I guess a little nice moment there, um, a way to wrap up that whole thing. And then the episode ends, they discover that the hitchhiker died and was killed by the walker and they take his backpack so i don't know what that significance is um do you have any thoughts on that well i think they there's going to be you know it's another further loss of humanity right the choice of not helping the hitchhiker goes against what it means to be human in the sense that we are called to take care of each other and so they choose not to indirectly they allow the death of that hitchhiker and when they pick up that bag, it's continuing the spiral of, of losing their humanity. Uh, of course, the episode itself is about regaining their humanity. So that contrast between uh, losing and gaining is the world they're living in. They're walking this line between being human and being a zombie, being less than human. Uh, and I think they take steps forward and take steps backwards. I don't know if they're even processing it with all the mm -hmm. trauma they already have. Yeah. Okay. So spiritual themes from the episode. Well, I think, you know, I think redemption uh, of the relationship between um, Rick and Morgan is, you know, I think, can they, can they reconcile their separation uh, and become uh, friends, so to speak, again, can they bond there? And I, I think, you know, that's an interesting thing. And because of their trauma, Rick, like you said, can't save Morgan yet. Maybe there's hope yet. Maybe, maybe planted some seeds. We'll see. Um, but can grief be healed? Can guilt be resolved? Good questions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we see Carl's desire to hold on to memory and legacy. And I think that's a beautiful thing in a world that seems to be destroying any sort of tradition or any sort of holding on to memory. It seems like everything is about loss. And so Carl's desire to find a picture that he can hold on to, a memory he could hold on to, is really a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I really find that Morgan not willing to go with the group that Morgan staying alone is really depressing because I think everyone's created to be in community and Morgan's not going to heal unless he's within a group. I mean, we can't, we are created to be with people. Uh, and so that was disappointing. We may be able to come back around at a later uh, episode, later season or whatever. We'll, we'll come across Morgan or maybe this is the end. 
of Morgan. He dies alone. I don't know. And the, so Rick has to process all that. Rick is needed. Rick needs a group. Rick needs people. Morgan does too, but Morgan is not ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. The title of the episode is clear. We've we mentioned it several times. There, there's the you know Morgan is trying to clear the area of walkers. Um, that's his purpose. He feels. But there's also Rick searching for his purpose as a leader, as a dad, as, uh, and so Clear is an interesting uh, title for an episode and um, no one really finding clarity yet for a purpose in the end. Mm -hmm. and, and going back to the legacy and memory thing with Carl, they've done a great job with kind of Lori's legacy living on through Rick and now through Carl. You know, even though she died, um, it they have done a, a good job in this show of carrying on the legacy of the dead. Um, yeah, and Judith being, you know, of course, a part of that too. Yeah, that's a great point, Micah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought this was a good episode. Um, again, it was a standalone, so it's kind of hard to look. You can't really look at it for like the overall of the season. But as a standalone, I thought it was really strong. So... I think overall I'm going to give it a nine. I think um, it wasn't like a perfect episode of the show, um, but it was solid and um, great. Some again, some great themes in it. What would you give the episode? Yeah, I would give it a, an eight and a half. I think so. I think I gave all three episodes about the same. Mm -hmm. They all felt good to me um, mm -hmm. and appropriate for this space, this spot in the season. Um, and you know, the concepts of home and loyalty and sanity you know, are woven within these episodes really well. Um, I enjoyed them. I think it, these were probably like some of the least action-packed episodes, or definitely of the season, um, besides, you know, how episode 10 ended with the governor attacking. Um, but I think it was kind of needed to slow things down a little bit and really focus on, like, the characters' emotions. Um, and I think the, I think the, these last four episodes are going to be big ones, or I'm assuming. I think so too. I, you know, I think there's a lot of layers to these characters. I think the writers have done an excellent job. Um, again, you're watching, if you're watching for action, you might be disappointed when you see episodes like these. But I mean, I'm really looking at uh, healing and finding wholeness in the midst of a an crazy world. I mean, this these are good episodes for all of us, wherever we are watching these, uh, to deal with our trauma and our pain. Um, as we're watching characters trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, we'll be back next week to talk about episodes 13, 14, and 15. We're almost done with season three. I'm looking forward to watching and talking about them with you. So anything else you want to say? Uh, question. Are we going to talk, when we'll talk about the season of family, we're going to talk about the next graphic novel. I think so. Okay. Um, I think that's going to be a, like a tradition for, because there's a lot of episodes, seasons with 16 episodes, so the way we review three at a time, it means there's one odd one out. Okay. Which I think is good for the finale to also talk about the season as a whole and, and characters then, and, then, uh, and uh, delete delete scenes, scenes yeah. and then the book. Yeah, so yep, we have enough good. to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yes, thanks everyone for listening, and we will see you next week. See ya.